Let's go ahead and go back to my first workspace. And what we're going to be doing now is to containerize the node application. I mentioned earlier that I'm going to put these two application inside of the same Docker Compose file, and that's what we're going to be doing. But before I do that, I want to take care of this undefined, as you can see here, so that we can have our log uh, properly displayed on the console. So I'm going to cancel this and then close this terminal for now. And let's go inside of the controller. So I'm going to say controller. And we need to change, uh, let's go up a little bit. So we need to change this, okay? So this original URL, as you can see here, this is supposed to be uppercase. So this right here is supposed to be uppercase. And we can go ahead and just make this change pretty easily in the entire file. And to do this, I'm gonna go and enter a command into Vim. And I'm gonna use the substitute or S for substitute, which means we're just gonna switch a word for another word. And I wanna do this in the entire file, so I'm gonna put a dollar sign in the beginning. So that means that I'm targeting the entire file. And then I'm gonna pass in a forward slash and I'm gonna say the word or the pattern that I'm looking for. And this is gonna be original, URL in all lowercase, and you can see that it's highlighted in the document. And then I'm gonna pass in another forward slash and then pass in what I wanna replace it with, which is gonna be original URL with uppercase U, so URL. So I'm gonna change original URL or lowercase to original URL with the U being uppercase. That's the change that we need to make. And then I'm gonna pass another forward slash. I'm gonna pass in a G and a C. The G is for global and the C is for confirmation. So before it makes the change, it's gonna ask me if I want to change that word. So then I'm gonna press enter. And you can see that for the first one, I can press yes or no or whatever. So I'm gonna press yes. So it changes the first one to uppercase URL. Then it's asking me for the next one. I'm gonna press yes. Yes, next one, yes, and then the next one, yes, and then the next one, yes, and then that last one, yes. So it did six substitutions on six lines. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and save that and then open the terminal again. And then I'm gonna run the commit again just to make sure that this is working properly now. So I'm gonna run it again. Okay, go to my second workspace. Uh, clear the screen, send the same request again. Uh, this time I'm just gonna change the email because if we do that, then it's gonna fail because the email cannot be the same. I'm gonna put some A in here and then I'm gonna press enter. And then now let's go back to the first workspace. You can see now we have the path properly displayed here, which is for slash patient. Okay, so I just wanted to fix this because I'm sure it was annoying some of you guys. So I'm gonna cancel this and then close this terminal. And then I'm gonna create a Docker file so that I can create an image for our application. So I'm gonna open the file menu and then inside of the root of the application, so in the Node.js API folder, I'm gonna create another file and I'm gonna call it Docker file. Okay, so capital D and then no extension, just Docker file. And then I'm gonna press enter and you can see the Docker file is right here. I'm gonna click on it and then close the panel. So this file is gonna be pretty simple. So we're just gonna have a few lines in here, but it's a very powerful file. So even though you have a few lines, it's just gonna be able to build the image using some existing base image. So what I'm gonna do is specifying the base image. So I'm gonna do from, and then I'm gonna say node, and I want an Alpine version. So Alpine is like a smaller version of some image that you can have. So I'm gonna say Alpine 3.11. So that's the base image that I'm gonna be using. And then I want to define a work directory. So I'm gonna say work there and let's set this to forward slash usr and forward slash uh oh, that's supposed to be usr and then forward slash code okay so we're gonna create this folder called code and that's where everything is gonna go and then i want to copy the json file so i'm gonna say copy package that json and actually let's copy everything so instead of just the package we're gonna copy the package lock as well so i'm gonna put a star here so it's gonna copy everything that has package star.json. So it's gonna copy the JSON file and the package dash lock.json file. And then we need to run npm install. So I'm gonna say npm install. And this comment should be available to us because we're doing this on the first line. We're getting this image from node. So that's a node image. It's gonna have node install with it. And because we do that, then we can run this command because we know that npm is gonna be available. And then I want to copy the rest of the application. So I'm gonna say copy everything inside of the code folder that we just created. So the usr for slash code, that's gonna copy everything in there because we define it as a working directory. So the immediate directory is this directory because we define it as a working directory. And then I want to expose the same port. So I'm gonna export 3000. And then I need to pass in the command I want to run whenever we start the container. And to do this, we're gonna pass in an array. And the first one is gonna be npm, so npm. Second one is gonna be run. So exactly the same command that we run whenever we're starting the application. And the last one is gonna be start prod. Okay, so that's the production environment that we're starting here. 
So exactly the same command that we run whenever we try to run the application. So npm run start dev or start prod. And then I'm going to save this file. So this is going to be our Docker file. And also these images are very large. For example, this node image here, even though it's an Alpine version, which means a smaller version, it's still going to be very big. There is a way you can use a builder to make your image a lot smaller, but I'm not going to get into this in this video because, you know, I don't want to overwhelm you with Docker stuff. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we're going to go inside of the Docker compose file. And then we're going to create another image for the container to run, which is going to be an image that's going to be built off of this Docker file. So hopefully this is making sense because as I mentioned before, this is not about Docker, but I just want to, you know, show you how you can create an application and then Dockerize it with Docker. So some knowledge of Docker is required because otherwise this is just going to be overwhelming to you. So I'm going to press enter here and then collapse this. So the same way we have this service that we're defining here. So the MySQL service, we're also going to define our node application service. So I'm going to see if I can uh, copy all this and I'm going to copy everything and then see if I can paste it down here. So paste and I'm going to change the name to something like node app. Okay. So this is going to be the node app service and we don't have a base image. So I'm going to delete this line. I need the container name. So I'm going to change this to node app and I'm going to scroll up as well all the way up. So the name of the service is going to be node app. So that's the name of the service. And then for the container name, I'm just going to change this to node app container. Okay. So that's the node app container. And then another parameter I need to pass here is the build. So we're going to say build. And that's how you specify that you're going to build the image from some Docker file. So I put a dot in here to specify that the Docker file is in this current directory because it's on the same level as the Docker compose. And then I need to give my image a name. So here I'm going to say something like node app and then give it a tag of v1 for example so that's going to be the name of our image and i don't need this command and i don't need this one either so we know that this is going to be 3000 so let's go ahead and change this to 3000 then i'm going to copy this and then paste it here copy it again go down here and then paste it and then remove that one save inside of that container we're going to expose 3000 and then we're also mapping 3000 to 3000 so this is going to be the mapping on our local machine so this first 3000 and the second one is the pod that we're exposing inside of the container which is this 3000 here so we're mapping the 3000 from inside the container to our local computer which we're doing here by exposing it from inside the container and then we're mapping it here and for the volume i'm just gonna delete this line so we can map this to some folder so we can see something like uh, node app and then we map it to um, our folder. So here I can say something like forward slash code and we need to pass in some environment variables. So I'm going to put a space here so that we can see the difference between the network and the actual service. So I'm going to select all these environment variable because uh, I think I'm using the last two. So let's delete these ones. The service tag can be dev and for the service name, I can change it to like node app service, for example can be anything and this dev should be prod. So let's go ahead and see if we can change that. So uh, I don't need to confirm and I'm going to change everything to prod. So I'm going to change this to prod and I'm targeting the dev. So let's go here and say dev and then press enter and everything is changed. All the devs are changed to prod. And for our environment variable, we still need to pass in the MySQL environment variable. But remember, this service is also on the same network as the MySQL service which means we can connect the two together because they're going to be in the same network inside of the container. So let's go to the .env file and I'm just going to copy everything inside of this file and then go back and I'm going to paste everything here and I'm going to move everything over and scroll up. So for the host, I need to pass in the name of the service. So this is going to be my SQL DB. Okay. So that's the name of the service that we define. So if we go up for one second, you can see that this is the service name by default. That's going to be the service name. And if we go down here on line 20, you see that I'm passing in the service name here, which is the same name. So whatever name you define for the service name, or if you don't define a service name, then whatever name you have here for the service, then that's going to be the default that you need to use. So let's go down again. And we actually need to change this equal sign to a colon. So let's change that. The database port is going to be the same. So I'm going to change this to a colon as well. And the user is going to be the same. So admin, the password is going to be the same. So let me in. The only thing is I'm going to put this in single quote. So I'm going to put this inside of single quote. And I'm going to do the same thing for the user as well. I think if you don't put the single quote, then it's not going to work. I uh, also need to pass in a space here. Oops, let's go up here, put in a space, another space here. So space, the database name is going to be the same, but we need to change this as well. So semicolon, 
And then for the connection limit, we're going to change this as well to a semicolon and then save. And uh, we need to put a space here and also another space here. Now, one last thing that we need to do, we need to tell Docker that this node app service that we're defining on 24, as you can see here, this whole service that we're defining here, we have to tell it that it depends on the MySQL service because the MySQL service or the MySQL container has to be running first and then it can run this service. So to do this, we're gonna add in another key here and that's gonna be depends underscore on. So that's how we tell it what service it depends on. And this takes a list, so we're gonna put a dash and then we're gonna say MySQL DB. So that depends on the MySQL DB service. Oops, DB. All right, so let's go up to the top just to recap. So you can see here, we're defining another service. So that's the node app service. We give it a container name. We tell it to build an image using the Docker file and then we give the image a name. So that's the node app v1. And I noticed that I have a typo here, so we can go ahead and change that as well. So we need to put another P here and then save. So node app v1, the v1 is the tag or the version, and then we define a value. Uh, we don't really have to do that, but I do it anyway. And then we map the port from the local computer to the container. We expose that port from inside the container as well. And then we define some environment variable, as you can see here, we're defining all this environment variable. So the host is MySQL DB, because these two services, they belong to the same network. And then we pass in the port, so 3306, the username, so admin, the password, the name of the database, so the DB name, and then the connection so 20 again service tag for prod and then the service name is node app service so that's all we have to do to put these two services together inside the same file and then down here we're specifying that this node app depends on the mysql service so the mysql database is going to be started first and then it's going to start this container because it knows that it depends on this mysql service and then we specify that they belong to the same network. So we say networks and then we pass in the internal net, which is the same network that we have here on 21, as you can see here. So that's all we have to do for this file. Again, save the file and you can go ahead and take a look at this file if you want, spend more time on it. A lot of these things that I'm putting on here, they're on the Docker hub. So if you go into the Docker website, you search for MySQL, they will show you how to do all this, uh, you know, environment variable and everything and map the ports and everything and how to load a script. And our node app again, we're building it from the Docker file. So the build is a dot, we'll give it a name, etc., etc. So make sure you go through this file and make sure you really understand what it's doing. So now whenever we build these containers off of this Docker file, we will launch both the node application and the MySQL database that it needs. And then we'll be able to deploy the application that way. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. But for now, let's go ahead and test the application.